Introducing the Seiko Captain Willard X SPB237 in gorgeous slate gray, and it has a textured dial, a nice upgrade from the standard Willard, almost a distressed look with that textured dial. And this one is right up my alley. It's just fantastic. You get a vintage vibe without waiting 20 to 50 years, however long it takes. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I have it on the gray strap. This one comes with the amazing Saichu straps. They are ISO rated straps, so you can actually dive with them. They have the tsunami on them as you can see right there and has that beautiful kimono woven pattern they are fantastic now the other color is a khaki green i took it off because this gray matches the dial perfectly but when you look at the khaki green or army green whatever you want to call it we can see that keeper sizes are different now i'm going to show a macro of me wearing it properly when we did the spb 239 63 mass i couldn't get it into this top slot it was supposed to loop around into the larger strap you'll see it on my wrist it works out actually quite well there are new willards the ice divers in america only and unfortunately we won't be seeing them on the channel but don't sleep on this one okay the ice divers they seem like a no-brainer they look unbelievable however this one has its own special charm you know what it can make a case for itself as probably the best Willard. It's just so subtle and gorgeous. The case shape, typical Seiko cushion case, high polish on the sides, nice high shoulder blade, and beautiful brushing on the top of the lugs that travel throughout the case. And we have that iconic Captain Willard look with this thick crown guard. I know it's not exactly at four, so it creates a little bit of a different look. Don't worry guys, Seiko is aware it was on purpose. This is the style they wanted. This is the look they wanted. It would have been easy for them to put it exactly at four and skew the dial feet just a tad so it lines up. Not hard. So this design, on purpose. And I think it looks great. It gives the Willard a new look. It freshens it up. It makes it slightly different from the vintage, keeping the value there for the vintage. It's a winner. This design is phenomenal. The watch has 20 mil lugs and it does not taper on this strap. I would like to see this on the bracelet, but if I did own this watch, which I'm ultra tempted because I don't have a Willard anymore, this one is calling my name. I would put it on a Tropic maybe. That's how I would wear it. But I have a lot of subtle watches. <laughs> if you look at my watch box, they're all black or gray. I think I have one blue, but it's always like this style of watch, which that's why it speaks to me so much. But I don't want, I don't want 10 of the same watch. That's the only thing holding me back, but it's tough. Now the bezel has a subtle gold, bronze, coppery hue. It makes it look more expensive. It just does over the normal silver one. Let's have a listen. Nice feel, dampened and smooth, and has soft clicks. All right, very nice. Inside that beautiful crown guard, we have a six and a half mil crown, and it's screw down 200 meters of ISO wet tested, officially certified, water resistance. Now these are the measurements that I got. 42.5 in diameter, not including the strap. The strap adds four mils, but without the strap, 13.2 thickness. That's including that single domed sapphire crystal. You get a gorgeous distortion right there. And it does have anti-reflective coating, drilled lugs and a lug to lug of 46.7. So this thing it wears better than an SKX, I would say. Now the dial is the star of the show. It reminds me of the new limited edition Umira with that mountain texture. Some people are calling it a distressed look, a beaten down dial. But um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. How does the dial look to you? And when we look at the loom on the squared off indices and hands, it's perfectly done. 
it's a little bit less than creamy. So not overly done faux patina. This thing is perfection. It just has a hint, a hint. You know, when you ask for a sprinkle of cinnamon, that's what this is, a sprinkle perfectly done. And I love the hands, how they're split in half, half brushed, half polished. It's such a great look and it works well on the Willard. It does work well on the 63 mass, but it works better here. Now the price. This thing comes in at 1300 USD. That's high. You know, a lot of people, they complain, I can get a turtle for 500. Of course, it's hard to sell watches at retail. Give Kavar Jewelers a ring. Let them know I sent you and they will take care of you. Okay, guys, as you can see, that second keeper is floating. So you can bring it right up there next to that keeper where it's impossible to get through. That's how you wear it like a normal NATO. So here she is on my six and a half inch wrist and it looks perfect. It does float, of course, but there's two layers of the Saichu weave. There you can see that float right there. I'm not a fan of NATOs, but this one is comfortable. Let's do the weight on the strap that it comes with. Ooh, 105, nice and light. Excellent. All right, guys, I had to take her off the strap. It was too high and it was getting no reading and it was just blank, all right? So now it's off, it can finally hear it. This is the 6R35, 70 hours of power reserve, 21.6 VPH, 24 joules, hack hand wine automatic. 0.0, .0 beat error, plus nine, plus eight, plus five, and the fourth and final round, plus four. All right, pretty good. A little bit of a low beat error, 246, but it's kind of common with these movements. Because of the crown guard and how it's angled, I had to tilt it a little bit to get a true 12 down. And now we're gonna see the positional variance, how it's gonna react on your wrist. We have a small drop in amplitude, but it was already low, but that's good news. At least we know this is just a low amplitude movement. And plus four, zero, and the beat error did not go up, which it usually does on the six Rs by 0.2 and plus two and such a clean line, wow. And the fourth and final round, plus two. I would call this a win. Good job, Seiko. Okay, here is the loom shot and of course it's blue. It has the faux patina, but it's still Seiko Luma Bright and it's ultra powerful. Man, this is another reason to want this one. It's got the blue loom, ah, man. Look at the reflection of the loom on the bevel of that sapphire. It's a huge, beautiful bevel. And you can see the reflection there. That's so nice. Love it. All right, guys, here it is on the khaki green strap. I don't know why they went with this color. I don't see it. It just does not go with this watch. Am I crazy? Do you guys think this goes? I don't know. It's just, no, 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 no. The gray one is the one to wear it on, or of course, a Tropic or rubber strap. This one, is a great Willard, arguably the best Willard. I know the Ice Divers, I'm not gonna see them, unfortunately, but the Ice Divers are fancy and new and with that Fume dial, which of course is gonna grab your attention and you're gonna want it, but this one I think has more staying power in the collection. It's subtle, it's subdued, it's classy, and it's just gorgeous with that textured gray dial. Let me know, all right? Passing it to you down below. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.